Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Ted, hanging out with Dave, and uh, you know today we're going to talk about the uh, the complications of pretty much running campaigns out of the same location. Uh, before we get into that, jump down to the description below, click the link for our newsletter, so sign up. It's a great way to get you know gaming tips delivered to your email, and you know even uh, figure out how to game with Nerdarchy. So. Back to the regular scheduled program. So Dave and I have been running games in our homebrew world for over a year now, and we're based out of Griffin Gaff, the same, the same town, city, whatever you want to refer to it as. And I know that personally as a DM, there's been times where things that Dave has done has created frustrations for me, and there's times that stuff that he's done has inspired me to do you know, different things. I, I use that as a leaping point. So, what is what is your your take, your 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 feedback on this? Well, you know, I can honestly say I've never been frustrated by anything that's happened. I've I've just kind of used it as building blocks, and you know, like I don't do a whole lot of far flung planning for my campaign anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, so I guess that kind of in some ways makes it a lot easier. That's you know, I'm able to just roll with the punches and go right. with the flow. Well, I mean, my, my DMing style has definitely, um, you know, changed throughout the years. I, I used to be, um, you know, very, very storybook, very linear, if you will. And I would create these story arcs and, you know, yeah, the players would try to go veer off and I would, I would work with them. But for the most part, I created this massive story arc and expected the players to just follow along um, as I've, gained more DM skills, I've moved definitely more into the, the sandbox, and I've got for my campaign this very wide story arc that's going to that's gonna encompass one major theme, but like I don't have a connecting point from where you guys are now to where the end story is yet. You know, it's just like, all right, we'll get there eventually, you know. Well, I know that feeling. I have a big ar overarching uh, campaign plot I'm working on now, that, you know, it's there, and I'm not quite sure what direction that's going to go, you know, because I really just kind of, like, sidetracked you a little bit from that story mm -hmm. with the last session, which, you know, well, part of that last session was kind of inspired from uh, a lot of the stuff that Ted does in his game. You know, there's been a lot of blood cultist stuff. There's been um, a lot of stuff with the mayor, who, you know, the former mayor who used to be, you know, the head of the blood cultists in this area. And, uh, you know, so I like to sometimes just throw, like, a zinger in there when I end the game. In my last session, I was like, you arrive back to Griffin Gaff, and it's on fire. You see smoke in the distance. Yeah. So, so we were, like, between sessions, I was like, oh, crap, so what's that mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, typically when I put, uh, you know, as you would call them, a zinger at the end of a session, I typically am foreshadowing what I'm already thinking um, because I don't have a problem putting a little bit of thought ahead as to what I'm going to do. But there's there's many times that I'm like, all right, I have no idea how the players are going to deal with the situation in front of them. So, like, you know, the last session that I ran, um, you know, or the, the previous session that I ran, I ended it with, you know, some of the party wanting to head off towards, you know, Craith and Gulch to talk to the dwarves, and another part of the party wanting to go to Karshapathon to talk to the elves. So then when we got to the game, both players that were going to go talk to the elves didn't show up. So I was... Easy peasy. So that, well, that created, um, you know, a difficulty and an opportunity for me as a DM. I was like, all right, well, I don't need to worry about what's going on with the elves, but it does create an opportunity of, of like, well, there's a story there, and what is it? So I was several different options of, um, you know, what happened, and I'm like, well, how how do I, you know, play this? How do I, you know, figure it out? Um, so I, I, I actually talked to a couple different players, a couple different people, including, you know, one of the players that was going to be absent, and I'm like, well, what do you think about this idea? What do you think about that idea? And he's like, well, I really don't like this one, which led me to want to go down that path, <laughs> um, just because I thought it would be more more complex and, and interesting to deal with at the start of the next session. So it's technically not decided because the session the next session hasn't started yet. 
yet. So I ended with you guys approaching Griffin Gaff so that there wasn't going to be any questions of, you know, you know, a solidified plan. I could still go either direction that I wanted. So, so now, you know, back to like the, you know, on the shared aspect, like when I was building my last session, I actually wanted to build off of something you did, mm -hmm. but it was completely, it didn't interfere with anything you did. It didn't really change anything you did, but it did add an extra element that, you know, that you obviously probably hadn't planned on doing it unless we happen to be thinking of the same thing. And I introduced the new villain. Right. You know, and so instead of just be like, oh, the Griffin gas on fire, uh, you know, it was, there was a fire, but there had been several fires. Right. And then, you know, so I was like, well, how do I connect this all together? And I was like, you know what? I want to do something with the mayor. I haven't really used his, his story in mm -hmm. this at all. But not only did I want to use the old mayor, I wanted to use the new mayor and actually the council themselves. Right. So all the fires were connected to the mayors and the council. Mm hmm now the the you know, the council that's something that you know you kind of created um based on the actions of my game yes. when when literally your character beheaded the old mayor in town and it's like all right well now there is no leadership how do we figure this out so like your session you ran up oh, the murder the the mayor's been been killed and there's now a council that's set up to number one offer a, uh, a contingency plan so this doesn't happen again. In case the mayor happens to be a blood cultist again. <laughs> In case the mayor happens to be a blood cultist again. Um, but also a way of instant, instantly creating leadership for the town while they figure out who's actually going to be in charge. Which then led back to my game where we did a whole electoral campaign of who was going to become the mayor, and you know, turns out one of the player characters decided he wanted to run. So it was a whole back and forth thing, and I, I thought it was 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 really cool and really well done. Um, that you know, we had this ebb and flow for a couple different sessions back of, and of forth. The, yeah, of the election and stuff. Well, and one of the reasons why I instituted the council too was in case, like that player got elected to be mayor and he still was going to adventure and stuff. Mm -hmm. It would it wouldn't like totally like decapitate the city the city of Griffin Gaff or the town of Griffin Gaff while he was doing stuff. Right. I mean it, it worked out anyway because it turned out that Ryan decided to bow out of that game anyway, and so his character became an NPC. Right. Um, and, and you know that worked anyway. But I still think it's good to have that dynamic of now there's a council, now there's a mayor. It creates you know uh, it creates more of a um, complex and diverse political structure in Griffin Gaff mm -hmm. uh, for both the, the, the players to interact with and the DM to use as a tool. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, down the road, it could definitely set up political intrigue and stuff like that, which is kind of cool. You know, I used it as a you know part of the backdrop of the story that I just told, and, and you know, you know, and I had kind of had the, the, the bad villain like disappear disappear or die under mysterious circumstances so that they can come back. Mm -hmm. You know, I did, you know, I did this whole thing where, uh, you know, the players found her diary and it turns out she's the Ill illegitimate daughter, uh, tiefling daughter of the mayor, you know? So, you know, who's to say like, you know, you know, she could you know, even, even be connected to, uh, Narkitis, the, the blood God or mm -hmm. the blood demon, the blood demon, you know, or one of his underlings. Now, the, the, the other thing that I wanted to, to point out is Dave and I, we don't discuss um, what, our, what our stories are going to do. And like, there's a couple times where I've wanted to do something and I'll be like, hey, are you doing this? Are you, you know, without giving anything away. So we really aren't aware of what's actually going on behind the scenes in either game so that there's no spoilers or things that are like, oh, well, yeah, I'll just close my eyes or ears to to that yeah. effect. Well, there was one big thing you had asked me about early on, and I had to like, I had to actually like do my damn. There's not the meta game on it. There was there was one one thing I I asked about, and you know you did give me direction, uh, and and since then I I I've kept everything as as vague as possible. Yeah, like you um, you would ask me you would ask me about the mayor. Right. You know, should you make him a blood killer? Just, and this is my idea. And I said, that's a fabulous idea. And it's great. And then during one of the sessions. Well, it was actually after it was after that session that I that I talked to you about it. Yeah. Because we actually like the first time the players really got to when the, when the majority of them were collected. Um, uh, Scott's character is like the mayor's evil. He's a bad guy. He's the blood cultist. And, I, and I'm like, 
there was zero clues. What the flip? Like, now, <laughs> now, your initial reaction to that was? My, I was like, okay, well, if, if they're pointing this out already, I immediately wanted to yank the chains on that and have him be, be a good guy so that that didn't happen. And, you know, you had responded with, no, no. You, you, it was the most interesting part of your, your story arc that you had come up with. I'm like, no way. Plus, it rewards that player for being like, I was right. <laughs> Even though it turns out that player just makes really crazy <laughs> statements and notions throughout the game. So, <laughs> it, you know, it might not be, that, that part might not be as relevant. But, you know, but no, it was good. And, and then you actually went down, uh, like, the middle road. You found the middle road where you're like... Well, that was my original plan. Oh, okay. Was that he, he, he was, was repentant. Yeah, he was the repentant evil yeah. guy. And it's the only way that the town really wasn't just utterly destroyed after, you know, five decades of, of, you know, his influence. But it was the, okay, do I have him be, you know, the, this bad guy that's been allowing the seed to sow? Or do I have him be, you know, the upright... You know, good standing mayor and this and that. Now, in the more recent session, I did do something I, I was a little, I found a little funny based off of something you did because of the players, right? Mm -hmm. So one player started talking about the place with the good bread. Right. Then, you know, <laughs> and then, you know, Ted had him name the place with the good bread. Right. And we kept using it and going back. And then Ted was finally like, you can't actually get the good bread right now because he's rebuilding and expanding. Right. And, uh, you know, it's going to, you know, because it's, he's become so popular, especially with the heroes of the town visiting his establishment. All the time. So that, that, it's like, oh, this, you know, this is where the heroes go. So people want to go there to see the heroes. Yeah. You know? And then in my last session, I burned it down. <laughs> so, so you've now, you know, the, the, you know, you guys are going to come back to town and, you, you know, this is now going to be you know, three sessions where you're not going to be able to get the good bread. Yeah. Because you couldn't get it the, the one session, you guys were out of town for all of last session. You're going to come back, and the freshly built, bigger location is going to have been destroyed. Nice. So it's like you know, <laughs> it's pretty interesting. So I, I like the the feeding off of you know each other's uh, you know little side bits without it actually giving. And we, and we really haven't done too much of like where I do something, you undo it, and vice versa. Yeah, I, we've been able to have, we've been able to just keep building upon what the other person has done, and and even the other you know the other party, the other uh, uh, adventuring party gets mentioned you know from time to time mm -hmm. w with different things. It, it just adds to the backdrop and the shared the shared world feel of it. Uh, in your last game. I was actually able to uh, invoke something from my games as a player as opposed to a DM. Right. You know, in, in the negotiations with the, with the dwarves in order to get their aid. Right. I'm like, well, Griffin Gaff has, actually has something of value now. Because Griffin Gaff, like, throughout its history, has always been kind of a taker and, and kind of been, you know, been lucky to have other its neighbors help support it, especially in its hard times. Right. And, which is, is really, you know... Is, is really helped establish Griffin Gap, and, and for their part, they help get the goods from the elves and the dwarves out into the wider world, and also now, it also gives the dwarves and elves the ability to get each other's goods without having to deal with each other, <laughs> which isn't something we've explored too much, right. but, you know, I honestly feel like there's things that dwarves make that the elves would want and vice versa, right. but neither, two of them are too proud and stubborn. Well, they're, 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 the they're, they're always going to look at it. You know, the dwarves are going to say, well, you know, to the elves stuff, well, this is nearly as good as a dwarf can make. Yeah. And the elves would say, oh, this is nearly as good as an elf can make. You know, it's just, it's kind of a joke that's gone throughout, you know, D&D &D fantasy stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, and by having the market, you know, there, that's allowed, you know, human traffic to come in and be able to get everything. You know, so there's constantly you know trade caravans that can go back and forth and it's to the betterment of all and again without the necessary of elves and dwarves talking to each other. And, and on a, a microchasm uh, perspective it really has allowed for the elves and the dwarves to start beginning to build stronger relationships with each other mm -hmm. you know even if it is only player character and an NPC or player character and a player character uh, but you know it's still you know it, it's it's helping create bonds that weren't necessarily there before I mean, and this is throughout all fantasy and D and D worlds. I mean, they always do it. Legolas and Gimli, right? You, you know, um, those, Clint those, and Tannis. Those those tropes are, are are rich throughout throughout the things that you know. It's like, all right, dwarves and elves don't get along, so let's make enough of the dwarf to get that. They eventually find a way to get along. Yeah, yeah. So and so, but 
you know, I think, you know, one of the challenges when you have your own world is to figure out how to make that happen, or you can just go against, totally against the norm and do your own thing, right. you know, and be like, oh, no, they're the best of friends, and they always have been. <laughs> You know, or you know, you or you could go extreme and be like, no, they're hated enemies. Right. So yeah, there's there's other ways, but if you're going down the middle road, which we've we've done at least uh, with the races, and that's that's one of the things we've got going on. Right. And now we finally found a way to bring in the the, um, the Dragonborn, which is cool. And that's that's the thing where like most of my campaign has some little trickle backs to Narkitas. Yes. Uh, you know, most of your stuff I feel have, you know, trickle backs to the Dragonborn. You know, the, yes. fact, the fact that we've got, you know, two player characters as Dragonborn that makes that, you know, so much more And now important. and I wanna say now though it seems like now um it's not really giving anything away, but it's kind of going to uh, otherworldly realms is, is is hopefully where it kind of shifts to because now it's not just the Dragonborn, because we've inter cause I've introduced a whole other race. The Bargarians. The Bargarians, yeah. So, so we'll, see, we'll see where that goes. So the, the whole gist of what we're, we're talking about here, you know, we've, we've talked about our thought process of, of GMing, but if you've got a gaming group that shares the DM seat as, we, as we've done here, um, or as we do here, you know, feel free to do what we're doing it's not as difficult as you think to run you know simo games out of the same location if you've got two concrete story ideas and you're willing to talk in you know loose vague ideas but like hey you know are you planning to use anything specific with the mayor anytime soon no okay great you know you can just you know go with something like that and it doesn't give anything away um you know it could mean the mayor was going to do this or the mayor's going to do that but if he's already talking about using the mayor, well, I don't know, then I'll hold back. And, and, and you have to be able to separate. Another thing is, as long as you can separate player knowledge from DM knowledge. Yes. Like when Scott accused the mayor of, like, my character was like, no way. He's the pillar of the community. He's a hero, the original hero of the town. Are you kidding me? He was the There's a left. statue. There's yeah. a statue. <laughs> so, you know, it was, it was one of those things that, you know, it, it was great. And, you know, Dave's, Dave's a... a a really great player. He's a really great DM. Um, you know, so I, I, even though he had the knowledge of, okay, well, what do I do here? Um, you know, he was able to be like, okay, I'm just going to move forward and, you know, act surprised when it happens. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it makes for good. Like when you, when you do the shared world, like we're doing it literally as the DM, it gives you double the resources. You know, like I have all this stuff to tap into that I didn't even have to create. And vice versa for Ted as well. So, right. it, which is really nice. And even if you only really only use it for background flavor, mm -hmm. it, it's still helpful and useful and helps. I think it really helps uh, cement the world and tie your players to it more so. You know, you, know, you create an NPC and now both of you get to use it. You know, that, that world data can always be shared back and, back and forth. And I'm like, oh, you want to use the Elven, you know, Sage. Here you go. Here's an LSLR. Done. You know, oh. He wants to use something. I'll, I'll take this. Great. <laughs> yeah, people, places, events. I mean, hey, Eve Ryan, uh, Nerdarchist Ryan, doesn't even run in our world, and he just created a, a holiday for it and, re and wrote an adventure for it, which you can buy over on uh, Nerdarchy.com. Father, Father's Winter's Day, nice holiday adventure based off of the Grinch who stole Christmas. Yep. So, so there's all this different stuff that you guys can do and contribute. In uh, in this shared narrative, and it, it makes it makes it a lot easier for everyone in, instead of everyone just trying to make their own thing from from whole cloth and from scratch. I mean, there, that can be rewarding too, but depending on what kind of time constraints you have and how much energy you have to put into it, or sometimes it's just fun to work with your friends and build it together. Yeah. Uh, you let us know in the comments below what you think. While you're at it, like, share, and subscribe, or you can uh, head over to Facebook and, some, and check out some funny memes. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.